Okay, this video is going to be on Newton's second law. We're going to do Newton's second law in three parts. We're going to start with straightforward Newton's second law problems, and then we'll go through to ones where we go and connect dynamics or forces and kinematics and motion. So an object that is subject to an unbalanced force will accelerate. The key here being unbalanced. Just because there's a force acting on an object doesn't mean that it's going to necessarily accelerate. Um, it has to be a force that there isn't another force balancing off. Um, or when you add up all the forces, the F net for this law to apply does not equal zero. With that, what happens then is that the acceleration is proportional to the force, specifically the net force. And what that means is the harder you push on something, the faster it's going to accelerate. And similarly, the acceleration is inversely proportional to mass, which means the heavier something is, the uh, slower it will accelerate. Now combining those into an equation, A equals F net over M. Usually there'd be a constant in this kind of equation, but that constant is set to 1, and that's based on the unit Newton, 1 Newton, is equal to, if I rearrange this formula, F net equals MA. One Newton is equal to one kilogram times one meter per second squared. And so since the units all work out, we do not need the constant, and we can simply use this equation. I like this equation right here because I think it's the sensible one that connects the uh, abstract things of net force and mass to the observable result, the acceleration. But this is the equation you're going to see in all books and all textbooks. That's how it's always written. All right. So a frozen turkey, an important aspect in any, physic, any physics question, is resting on a frictionless table. There is an applied force of 15 newtons to determine the acceleration of the turkey. So in these problems, we usually will do a free body diagram. Mass should be in kilograms, as it already is. And the applied force of 15 newtons. My choice of direction here is arbitrary, but I think if we think of this turkey sitting on a tabletop, then it makes sense that if you're pushing on it, it's in the horizontal direction. Keep in mind, there is a force of gravity acting on this turkey and a normal force and that's what keeps it from moving through the table or anything like that. But what we're assuming here is that F, G, and F, N are equal to each other, at least their sizes are. And so they cancel each other out. So these forces exist. To do a proper free body diagram, I should include them. But it's not necessary to include them on a free body diagram that you're simply using to do the problem because on a flat horizontal surface, this force of gravity equals normal force bit is so common that often it's omitted. Anyways, I'll leave them here, and um, that's fine for this problem. In the future, we may choose to put them on or not put them on, depending on the situation. So if Fn and Fg cancel each other, then when I add all the forces on this object with the vector addition, then my net force is simply going to be equal to 15 newtons. And if you want, you can put that in the positive x direction. Newton's second law says F net is equal to MA. So 15 newtons is equal to 7.5 kilograms A. And if we divide both sides by 7.5, oh, an extra decimal place there, try that again. then we will get the acceleration of our turkey is 2 meters per second squared. It's always nice to put a box around your answer. There it is. All right. So that's a really, really simple one force, not really worrying about it kind of problem where we can see how to use this. Let's look at something with at least a couple forces here. Skydiver has a mass of 55 kilograms. During their fall, they open their parachute and it provides an upward force of 750 newtons and determine the acceleration of the skydiver. First things first, this skydiver is falling through the air. 
So there is a force of gravity on them. We're going to assume they're close enough to the Earth to use our simplified formula. But um, there's no normal force. They're not resting on a surface. They're not, there's no surface underneath them that's pushing back up on them to keep them from moving through. Hopefully if their parachute opens before they hit the ground, they won't experience too big of a normal force when they do hit the ground. But while they're in the air, there is no normal force. So I have to include the gravity. This isn't that like that last situation where I said gravity and normal force cancel because there's no normal force. So negative 9.8 newtons per kilogram and a mass of 55 kilograms. 9.8 times 55 so I get a gravitational force of negative 539 newtons. So 750 up, 539 down. If I total those two as my net force, I have 750 as a positive plus negative 539. And this parachuter will be subject to a net force of 211 newtons up. Using Newton's second law now, F net equals MA, 211 newtons equals 55A. Put my units in there. Dividing both sides by 55 kilograms. My acceleration is 3.84 meters per second squared. Interesting that the acceleration would be going up. If we think about our, our parachutist, here they are, here's the great big parachute. Before the parachute opens, they're going to get going down pretty fast. When the parachute opens, it's going to have to actually accelerate them up to slow them down enough that hopefully they don't hit the ground going too fast. So you might be thinking, it shouldn't the acceleration be down because this object is in free fall and it's moving down. But remember, it's moving down, but it's accelerating up. So when your movement and your acceleration are in opposite directions, that's when you have an object that's slowing down. So your velocity is becoming more upward, even if you don't end up going up at any point. So there's a, a parachuter and a frozen turkey. We'll go on to the next uh, video with some more complex Newton's second law problems.